Hey everybody, uh, real quick, uh, just a disclaimer, um, this is old content, uh, this is something we filmed like months and months and months ago, this was supposed to be bonus content on the Patreon stuff, but uh, we were having some audio technical difficulties when trying to record the new podcast, so I am posting this, just, I, I've listened to a little bit of it, and it's really stupid and really bad and really ridiculous, so uh, please do not, uh, don't let this like skew your view of what the podcast is. I, just, I, I think some of the stuff is really funny. Uh, I was like busting out laughing and I sent some of the uh, the clip to Blake. So like, please like, go in this with an open mind. I think you're going to really enjoy it. If not, it's okay. Just skip it. Don't listen to it. This is going to be a crap episode. Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> enjoy the podcast. <laughs> they are all me like they want to hold hands. Yeah, I don't remember the rest of the song. I Our mics are screwed up and this always sounds best. Yeah. You know what, man? I'm going to say something. Hey, yo, M, you got something to say? Man, nothing. <laughs> no, 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 another part. Thought you were about to tell him off, man. What's up, man? I'm gonna tell him when I feel like it, man. Shut up. You even back me up. We were supposed to be crew, man. I was about to talk right after you. Yeah. <laughs> These chicks. Do you guys have a problem with the mics? No, not at all. All right, Maybe. cool. I just know. I was like, just kidding. I, just, I was kidding. I mean, whatever. Oh, by the way, I'm we, just happy to be invited. This is bonus content, by the way. We need to film a little, oh. record a little bit of bonus content. Okay. <sighs> All right, that's enough. That was bonus nice, content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, all right, so let's just start the ball rolling off. How was you guys' day? How were your things done, things and stuff? Uh, I didn't really do much today. Normally, um, I would like go to class and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. um, I think it was canceled or something like that. Wow, but, lucky! Um, How often is that class canceled? A lot. Why? Which class is it? C plus plus. Okay. Oh. Is it just like a bunch of just assignments and kind of in classes sort of teaching you stuff? Like half the time I go into the class, it's just lecture anyway. Uh So it's like, okay, I don't really need to be here because... Well, like, will the professor take time to like answer questions and stuff like that? Or is it just like, here's the lesson, okay, goodbye? If you show up, um, so what he does is he basically just kind of reads off the slides. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a specific question on um, like a certain part of the program that you're having to write that week, Mm-hmm. Uh, then he'll actually like just straight up walk the class through it. Oh, okay. So oh, going to class is a good thing because half the time he'll just show you how to do the lab. But um, that's that's it. Yeah. That's... Wow, what a crap class. That was pretty horrible. Is the professor like old? Yeah. I had he's, an old... he's a really nice guy though. I had a really old sarcastic asshole professor. I mean, he was chill, but like he just. He... I think the years and years of teaching, he just kind of whittled away he's at his cynical like. Cynical of the students. He he has so it's just yeah. he's straight up. He's like, and it's really funny because he'll just call people on their shit, and he'll just you know someone's like asking a question. <laughs> like blah, if blah, they blah, say blah. they like blues, he'll they'll, he'll ask them, hey, name five blues. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's where I pick up my uh, okay. Pick but up my attitude. Do from. they like uh? Do they like Jewish people though? I don't know. Maybe. That's, ha, ha ha ha! You guys are funny. I don't um, the matter. What's the joke? We're like a joke within the joke within you. Have you been listening to the podcast at all, Blake? It's okay. You can say no. Yeah, I have. Yeah. No. Okay. What's, oh, what's speaking, the joke? Speaking of that, you one, like Jewish people? Yeah. yeah basically. Basically. I always bring up the fact that's that not a... people are Jewish. So <laughs> yeah, that's Alex was asking because you know that's what he does. <laughs> he likes to poke fun of me. Real quick, Alex, before you say what you're going to say, Brittany connected with me on LinkedIn. She sent me a friend request or whatever you call it. And you denied it, right? No, I accepted it. <laughs> I'm going to need you to. Why? Because I don't want you being linked with my girlfriend. <laughs> what the fuck? You don't want us to be linked in? <laughs> what if like she has all. career opportunities I, I for me? I prefer linked out with oh, you okay. two. Yeah, that's funny. You're really hilarious. Thank you. I'm going to use, honestly, because uh, the, they have a thing. Um, do, have you ever used LinkedIn at all? Uh, no. Okay, so they have a cap uh, at, I think it's like 500 people. Um, once you're linked, once you're connected with 500 people, it'll stop counting. It'll just say 500 plus. Mm. So for a while, I only had people that I knew on LinkedIn and like you know coworkers mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. And so uh, when I got to like my senior year in uh, college, I was just like, you know what, fuck it, like just let's just connect link, with link, literally link, link, everybody. Link, yeah. Exactly. So I think I'm at like 630 yeah. something. Yeah. And literally, I because before I was like maybe 100 or something. And I was like, all right, we're just gonna get to the 500, get the 500 plus. <laughs> Stop sending out requests. And so I'm like connecting, connecting, networking, networking, blah, 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 and just sending random people like that I've never met ever, just like a request to connect. Like you're a literal Facebook bot. I am a Facebook bot. And so they're either like a job recruiter or like they work for a company related to it or it's a UNT alum or whatever it is. I'm just, I hit the 500 plus and now just people request me. 
Like yeah, I'm just got, I'm such a large a presence because now. they think that you're hot shit. I I guess, but it's just like you're like that South Park episode where Stan gets like a million friends on Facebook. Yeah, just yeah. everybody's just my friend. It's you. And and so and it's like random people that like have no connection and it's like a connection based off of a connection that's from a different connection or some bullshit. Well, like you know, that. like the theory is you are connected to every single person on Earth, mm-hmm. like by seven people. Oh, the Kevin Bacon thing. What's the Kevin? What's the you've Kevin never heard of the Kevin Bacon theory? Uh-uh. <gasps> I'm connected to Kevin Bacon by no. seven people. Well, it's kind of well. It's like every single you know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who knows, knows Kevin guy, Bacon who knows Kevin Bacon. Right. But in terms of movies, so it's like. Uh, you you can name literally any actor, and they have some relation to Kevin Bacon, like uh, at least less than six or seven. What, is it seven? I forget. It's like less than five. Probably. I'm gonna say less than five connections. So literally, here we'll do this. Will be this will be fun <laughs> and surprise. Have you seriously never heard of this? No. Like, have, all right. So name just total random actor, actress, whatever. Um, Kevin James. Kevin James. No, because Kevin Bacon. Don't don't put Kevin James. No, 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 no. Better than this. No, 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 no. Kevin James. I think it's called the Bacon Number. All right. It's his Bacon Number. How many? All right. (laughs) How how many? How how many numbers do you think it is? I bet it's. I bet it's one. I bet he's connected to Kevin Bacon. Oh no 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 no! It's it's strictly through movies. So it's actually two. Oh. So uh, Kevin James and Reggae Lee appeared in Here Comes the Boom. Right. And then right Reggae Lee and Kevin Bacon appeared in Crazy Stupid Love. Okay. I get it. Okay. Okay. So. You got okay. another actor in mind? Yeah, I do. Um, let's go with um, let me. Steve Buscemi, bacon number. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I like how it's called. Were they What's, in a movie together? They were in a movie together. Which movie was it? Steve Buscemi and Kevin Bacon appeared in Come Together, A Night for John Lennon's World and Music. Oh, I guess it's like an, an appearance or an appearance Ooh, thing. Is right. that a movie or was it an event? I, I guess don't know. It, it sounds like a documentary or something, like a live concert thing or something. Well, uh no like, it, yeah it's a music tribute. concert film yeah it was a film come together night for john words is right. a 2001 television program tribute all right i've got it you ready yeah peter o'toole peter o'toole i don't actually know who that is i don't know who that is old actor o'toole fucking charlie chaplin <laughs> let's go <laughs> okay peter o'toole this guy yes all right peter o'toole bacon number oh here we go wow okay uh what's the number four Two. Peter what? O'Toole and Michael Fassbender appeared oh, in Prometheus. Oh my gosh. Michael Fassbender and Kevin Bacon appeared in X Men First Class. Kevin Bacon? Oh yeah, Kevin Bacon was in X Men First Class. Okay. So literally, like, seriously, it's, All right, it's fine. crazy. Like, and I've even done, like, Adam Everyone's Sandler and random to stupid Kevin yeah, Bacon. Kevin Bacon, literally. <laughs> so we totally cut you off, Alex. What were you going to say? So uh, the um, the podcast that you uploaded today. Yeah, was uh, it shit? No, which, I haven't, which one I haven't was listened it? to it yet, but it's, it's the, it's um, the, pod, the advice that we're going to do. Oh, yeah. cool. Wednesday one. Yeah. Um, so the thumbnail for yeah. it, I noticed was uh, yeah. You, you added like a little Target uh, yeah. fucking name tag yeah, on Alex from Target, Linus, <laughs> and then and, uh, and Blake had a cowboy. You hat. had a cowboy hat on. Wait, what? Show me <laughs> yeah. the show me the thumbnail. Yeah. So uh, I have a friend uh, Cole. He does he does like digital art. You didn't and... have an actual. You didn't crop. No, I didn't use your face. Okay, good. You, you used, used your face, face, didn't you? Yeah, I used my face. But <laughs> yeah. that's like whatever. Hey! <laughs> well, first of all, Blake, again, like what we talked about, I don't have a picture of your face. Good. So, like, it's just, I don't, good. I don't. And Probably then after, thing. actually, it was really funny. When Brittany connected with me, I was like, oh, okay, maybe this will finally, I'll be able to f- find a face. So I uh, went through her and then to her Facebook profile, and you're not on there, dude. Like, not at all. Yeah, because really she weird. knows how I am. Oh, really? You, you're like actively, you're like, I don't want to be on your Facebook. No, she knows I'm not into social media at all. Oh, she, she won't so, tag you? Like, whenever, no, because whenever we take pictures together, yeah. it's, she'll, she'll make, she, I think she's Instagram. That's where she posts oh, pictures Instagram? of us. Okay. But, yeah, like, I, I say, like, like, I have pictures of me and her, and I just keep them on my phone. Sure. Like, yeah, I, I mean, they're for, for your own. Just, right. You don't want to be selfish and share it with everyone. Um, but let's see. What was that? <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be selfish and share it with everyone. See, that was that one. The advice. <laughs> why? Why am I Charlie? I don't want to be Charlie. I mean, Brown. I just. Would you rather have been Linus? Hell, yeah, Linus is the shit in Charlie Brown. I kind of wanted to be Charlie Brown. Well, I mean, it works better because Linus is the red. I can't switch him by now. <laughs> yeah, it, it does make sense that I would have the red shirt. Yeah, because all right. So that was it, and I I gave Cole a really old cringy photo of you that's on Facebook to use to replace Fuck you, but he didn't use it unfortunately. <laughs> Good, because it's probably a really shitty. It was like your picture. very first uploaded thing back in 2011 or something. Jesus. Yeah, it was really that's, it was yeah. really cringy. I was like, use it. Use this, please, please. I would have beat uh, every I know. living shit I know, out of I know. you. Um, but yeah, so uh, pretty much, I figure on Wednesdays we'll just do the advice thing. I don't, did I tell you Alex is gonna be in the advice show today? 
we're not just doing I don't doing think that you said that it was going to be today, but you did tell me about it. Okay, yeah. So pretty much um, moving forward, Mondays is the movie review show, Wednesdays is the advice show, and then Fridays is the regular normal show. Okay. okay. And you're not doing Tuesday, Thursdays? Those are your days off? Those are my days off cool. for studying and uh, all that good stuff. Cool. Yeah. Because I want to go to Austin. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Believe but honestly, in like two weeks, I'll be like, nah, I'm not going to Austin. I'm going to stay here. And then well, like in a month from now, ah, I'm going to go to Austin. I'm going to keep saving as if we're still planning on moving to McKinney. That's fine. Just, and if the off, and, and the likely I mean, you chance can move that to you Austin still with move me. To, no. Why? Because I still need to train here. So Austin's kind of a not Dallas place. So. No, I love Austin. I would have no problem moving to Austin, yeah. but I need to train here. Well, I mean, it'd and be I can't at the, just can't you train here, get done, and then move to Austin after you're done? And I could, go into but I have to. I have no. Could, first what? of all, I'd have to find a dealership in yeah. the area that's yeah. willing to have my work. Yeah. I have to make sure that dealership can supply work. Yeah. And I have to make sure that that dealership knows my boss and yeah. it knows that I do good work. Okay. Well, then just do that. But would yeah, you be I'll able get to right wait that it. long? Because you just yeah, decided you, that you were so moving How long would to you Austin? stay in Austin before I moved down? <laughs> well, with the you? goal the goal would be is go to UT. I'd, I'd get my MBA at UT. So mm. that, that's why I'm going to Austin. Mm. That, that that was always the conflict was do that or stay here and then. Well, congrats on pursuing that. Yeah, I if hate you would have said that, I would have. I would have oh. been less of a dick about it. Earlier. Oh, so yeah. No, like, I'm not oh, just yeah, moving hey, to Austin way, just to, like, fuck everybody. Austin. Like, no, if I, I had a... That's I had what a... I thought. I thought you just... You <laughs> wanted... Because last time we were talking about this, you just wanted to... You know, like, Americans don't travel. Like, it's yeah, yeah, weird yeah, yeah. that people stay in the same place. I was like, okay, so he's going to move to Austin. Hey, do your thing, but... Yeah. No, know, no, no, I kind of no, just goal... had a three-hour talk with my parents about, okay, so how, here's how we're going to separate bills. Oh, really? Here's how we're going to do this, this, Wow, I feel like a shit. No, don't. Because wow. it, it was it was it was important to talk have that talk with my parents anyway. Uh huh. But okay, you know. Well, but yeah, that because congratulations. And, I'm no, sorry. I appreciate. It. No, no, no. Um, and and as and this has always been my conflict is, um, because you have to get like the average acceptance out of an 800 on the GMAT, you have to get like a 750. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a really high number, anyways. But um, the goal would be I'm gonna apply to Austin, UTD. Um, A and M, uh, UNT. Oh, just as soon as I finish that, just a mass application. Um, if I get accepted into Austin, awesome. If I don't, um, I probably still want to move there. Um, I've actually been applying to jobs, like literally in the past couple of days, just to see just what to I see can be. Because I really hate my job, and well, okay, I don't hate it, but I'm just not making any money, and I realize that I want to make money because making yes. money is great. Yes, it is. Um, okay, you want to come back to Target? No, <laughs> never, ever, ever in a million years. Um. But yeah, and so uh, I've been applying there, and then if if I if I don't get accepted to Austin and I don't really get any jobs, then if I'm still in the area and I'll go to UTD or something like that, then the house thing's back on. But well, you're not um, going to drive from McKinney all the way. Are you going to take that seventy? It's literally yeah, seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah, just okay. south on seventy five, and I don't know. It's like maybe minutes. twenty. So, I mean, I drove like with forty. With traffic though. Um. Well, because the thing is, I know with UTD uh, specifically, they have um. They, they call it like a flexible schedule, mm-hmm. so it's either like nights or weekends. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. So yeah, because I'll be I'll be working a full time job during that time. So right, from right. nine to five there, and then if anything, I'll be driving from work to school, which I'll just take thirty five onto six thirty five, or I guess thirty five to George Bush, and then from there. So okay, cool. But yeah, that's that's the thing. But again, I hate it because I know I'm worth more, but I don't like it. Sucks because I have to do shit to prove it. Like I don't know. Man, then then. It sucks. It life. does suck. Like, like just, I don't know. It's a POS. That's move. how life has been for like a thousand years, and it still sucks. Like yeah. no one can find a better, you know, alternative than I just, working hard and getting money. I wish that life just gave me everything that I've ever wanted. What did your dad call this show? The millennial. The millennial Big Big Fest. Fest. <laughs> hey, this is bonus <laughs> content, exactly. so it's okay. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I got, I got one. So, um, la- I, I got one. Like I have something, uh, something interesting <laughs> that I got uh, your guys' uh, opinions on. Um, so last night, you ready for this? I went to a church last night. What kind? Uh, it was the, uh, it's like an evangelical, super okay. huge, it's like the Which mega one? church. Which one? Off of George Bush. It's like Watermark or something. It's off of George oh, Bush. Oh, is that that big ass one that's like on the way super, to Denton? Super giant one. Yeah. Like yeah. huge. It's like literally there's that. Off of. 35 or george no, no, no. bush uh, george bush and uh oh no, no no i'm sorry it's off of 635 635 and okay. like coit around that area oh um, yeah 
And so huge church. There's literally like a giant ass corner bakery office building. Like yeah. it's like right smack dab there. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so we they call it the porch because on Tuesdays it's the porch. Uh, I think the guy said Mondays is like uh reformation or something like that or uh, not reformation but like um if you're addicted to shit you go there to get help um and okay. i forget i forget what they called it and then sundays is the regular church um so i went there on tuesday night and it's a, like literally a, four young people like who tried part- to convert you no 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 one tried to convert <laughs> me there was no conversion um i went there on my own accord um oh. i was just genuinely curious about what they do because um the uh so okay someone did conv- i'm not like oh what is- whoops well, i'm at a church now <laughs> 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 how'd i get here <laughs> hey, yeah. Jesus, Wait. what happened last night <laughs> you got fucked up son <laughs> <laughs> time to get saved <laughs> um i'm here for you to repent <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um no so i i went there i'm um, just looking for the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got lost i took a wrong turn and i'm here um, it was like, it's actually a really, really nice building, by the way. But, mm-hmm. um, so I went there, uh, there's someone from work who invited me. She's just like, Hey, you know, cause she, you know, she knows I'm Jewish and she's like, we've always, I say we o- always like, it's been a while. Like we, we've, I think we've known each other maybe for like a month and a half now. And we've always had this banter back and forth of like talking about not necessarily super deep religion, like philosophical, blah, blah, blah. But like, we can have a genuine conversation about like what you feel, how you perceive this idea and blah, 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 mm-hmm. and your identity and all that. And so I was like, okay. We'll go, and I've actually, this is not the first time I've been to church. I've been to church a few times in the past before. Um, it, it was like a, another evangelical church or whatever, but, um, you know, I was just genuinely curious, like, what's service like? So, but I go here, and it's different because it's, like, really, like, 18 to probably 24, 25-year-olds go. It's, like, the young kids crowd. And so the topic was, uh, like, marriage and stuff like that and, like, love and, like, to find your partner before marriage and advice that what we're doing wrong because there's such a high divorce rate you know, what can we do right? And so okay. the guy was a really passionate speaker. He was very into it. Um, he was very well-spoken. Uh, there were certain points that it almost flowed like poetry, almost. And I'm sure he planned that. And I'm sure he practiced and rehearsed this a lot. Um, but the points, and I'm now here. here's where you guys get to respond. And that's not just me monologuing for like half an hour. Here we go. Thank <laughs> God. Um, there were five, po- five points he mentioned. Um, I'm going to try and recall them to the best of my abilities because – um, I will honestly, I was trying to go in with an open mind, but there were a few times where I had to tune out just because he was catering to the church, and right. I was like, okay, yeah. pandering a little bit, you're pandering, not not okay, preaching pandering. to the choir, literally, literally, yeah, literally, pandering <laughs> and pe- preaching, and I was like, okay, I get it, you're talking about this, this doesn't, uh, this isn't part of what who I am, because it was like, um, the the overall theme, the background theme, where if you really invested in his speech was just follow jesus follow jesus you know pursue sure, it yep, and yep, it's not yep. he nothing to do with the church it was all a very personal relationship sure. with jesus right that's um, what that's what most most christian uh ideologies that branch out from the main catholic religion mm-hmm. it's it it becomes less of a fear god and more of a find a personal relationship with right jesus kind right of deal, so. and um and so and so at, at some of those parts i just kind of tuned out because i was like okay i get it you do you, you, you find Jesus, what you I'll believe. find God. Right. Sounds good. So, but the points were, um, number one, uh, oh shit, I forgot the first point. Um, All right. No, hold on, hold on, let me think. <laughs> I, they were, they were good. Marriage. Um, um, keep, keep going. Wrap up your really. Wrap, wrap up your really. Actually. Don't be a dummy. Finish on her Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. Um, uh, it was, uh, don't show your hurt or no, I'm sorry. Don't. Show your hurt, like uh, <laughs> show your baggage, um, be open, be vulnerable, um, don't go into a relationship, uh, hiding your problems. Um, and so specifically, and it was really interesting that he hit on this, he specifically was talking about porn addiction, um, about like masturbation addiction, porn addiction, and what else um, do you do when you watch porn? drugs, alcohol, and stuff <laughs> like that? Sure. Well, but and so apparently there's the, uh, he. I don't know who, but do they do do a lot of people? Is Catholic just confession or Catholic is, is that straight confession. Roman Catholic is confession? Okay, pretty much. Yeah. Well, I'm sure then he has had people come up to him and ask him and give him advice. Yeah, there are people. Yeah, the, what he does is he's more of a youth minister kind right, of guy. Exactly. Where he anything any problem you have, you can come to just him, walk to him and and yeah and yeah. Okay, so apparently uh, a lot of kids were saying that. Oh, you know, once I get married and stuff like that, and once I find the one, I'm not gonna have problems with you know with masturbating anymore, and I'm just gonna have sex. That's why it's gonna blah. double. <laughs> <laughs> and no, exactly, and that's and that's what he was saying. And you 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 have these preconceived notions of everything's gonna get solved, and they're using marriage as almost a fix. 
Um, and you know, I can relate to that because, uh, you know, I, in, from the, from the, from my parents telling me what's going on and blah, 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 and trying to instill advice and, and stuff like that. I, I vibe with that because it makes sense. I mean, right. It's you, you, you can't be, you can't only show half your person to your significant other and then expect right. all the problems to be solved. So, yeah. um, you guys assuming, well, what are those problems? That seems general. And I don't want to pull a Zach, you know, like. That's such a vague kind of oh, thing. Oh, no, well, like, okay, so, like, like, it, like, uh, like alcoholism, apparently. Oh, and then, honestly, I don't know what young guys are suffering from alcohol other than, let's get shit-faced, yeah! <laughs> but I wouldn't necessarily call, you're, you're not getting shit-faced at two in the afternoon. I don't I don't think no, young people no, are. No, right, no, but that's, no, I think that's the direction he was kind of like. That was last week. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, like, smoking and drugs and um, just he was made the huge chunk of it was like the porn addiction and stuff like that. And he was like, you know, if you're an addict, you have to admit that you're an addict and blah, blah, blah. And you need to deal with it. And you need to get help and blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, to me, it was a lot, a lot of surface level of like, okay, I'm identifying the problem, but, and I guess during his spiel, he's not going to try and re- resolve the problem. That's right. when you're supposed to go on Monday to, you know, fix that. So, um, do you guys agree with what he's saying and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah if you're thing. if you're gonna if your goal and that's what every marriage goal should be is to spend the rest of your life and have the most intimate of intimate relationships with somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need to at that point you need to let it all out on the table. Like mm-hmm. this is who I am, and you know if you don't if there's something wrong with it, let me know so I can work on this because that's what I want. The marriage is work. Any relationship is work. You need to well, to give and take in anything. And so if you have a problem, you need to let it let it be known to your most significant of significant people or persons in your mm-hmm. life in order to move on and make a better relationship for your spouse. Well, so. I, I think also part what and, and I don't know if this was my misinterpretation, but um, I think he was more talking towards fix it before jumping into a relationship. And yes, you can use your partner to grow and benefit and stuff like that, but you know, you don't want to jump into a relationship with issues. If you do, then maybe you need to take a step back, fix that first, then jump back into. So the you're supposed to be a completely perfect person before you walk into. I wouldn't necessarily. I mean, you can't. You, sure, you can have flaws. Yeah, but I you think... want to be the best person you can be. But if you're a smoker, like mm-hmm. he said, or you have a problem jerking off whenever mm-hmm. you want, I <laughs> I don't think that that those are issues that merit not going out and finding someone that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, that's where I draw the line. Like if you're an alcoholic, you need to get that taken care of. You need to find help, do whatever you need to do. If you're special, especially if you're into drugs, mm-hmm. that, that kind of hits home. You need to, you need to find help before you can, before you put another person through that baggage. Right. But if it's like smoking or you watch porn too much, mm-hmm. that, those seem minute to yeah. the big doozies like drug and alcohol. Yeah, I agree. Because it's like with the the porn addiction thing, is that really a huge issue nowadays? It is he, nowadays. He's driving. Actually, he's driving. Yeah, I like, saw I saw a study that, and I was watching a video on YouTube of a guy, and he was talking about a study where m- young men these days their their intimate lives are pretty much in the shitter because mm-hmm. we're so used to anything and everything we want on, you know, whatever porn site you visit. Right. Um, And it comes to the point where even young men today aren't looking for sex like we used to. Like, kid, like my younger brother's generation, so the 14 and 15 year old kids nowadays. I think they're called the Z generation. The Z generation (laughs) are not actively looking for, like, talking to girls and going up to them to try to, you know, get that kind of stuff because... Well, just I'm gonna wait till I get home and I yeah. Beat one off. And it's actually starting to cause infertility in some guys because <laughs> and yeah, and and so kid guys, our generation is not having as many kids, mm-hmm. partially because of marriage and whatnot, and we're being smarter about it and whatnot. Right. But also like because <laughs> there's like a lot of guys our age are becoming sterile because they found out how to jerk off when they were 13 and they haven't skipped a day. So that 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 I actually think is a problem. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Generally, as a generation, I'm not saying I have that problem. God no. <laughs> it's okay, Blake. You can, <laughs> I'm a, you can I'm open a, up. I'm among friends. <laughs> everyone, everyone here, plus the zero people who's going to listen to this bonus content, are here for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> red tube. Um, oh, God. 
It's on my favorites. <laughs> we Yo, joke, but that like this I, is probably somebody's like actual problem. I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily because and then the way he was describing it, it genuinely seemed like a, a control issue, and they were mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, as soon as I get home, or as soon as I'm stressed, or as soon as I'm blah blah, this is what I'm going to do. But uh, I, I don't know, man. When I was younger, sure, I was like super active. But I think the last time I jerked off was like, like I don't know, a week ago or something, a week nice. and a half ago. I just, it, I think part of it is because I'm so busy and it's because I'm we're doing the podcast, doing the work, studying, going out, blah right. blah blah blah. I don't have like a good five minutes to just dim the lights, <laughs> put on some Marvin Gaye, and get <laughs> to get it. some lamp no, candles and stuff. And get on it. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know. So I, I do agree. Um, I think I think also, and this is gonna make me sound like a total shithead. But I think having it, have being, having other options other than the handy. I think for me, I'm not like uh, brainwashed into like porn is my only way. You know, right. I think being able to you know talk to other women and have the social skills and the charisma and stuff like that to engage engage in the opposite sex. Um, I am able to <laughs> uh, direct <laughs> into a physical intercation with a woman. But yeah, now it is whatever. I don't know. We totally derailed from there. Well, um, other four points. So yeah, the other points. No jerking so, off. Got it. Check. The it, it was more the baggage and stuff. <laughs> yes, like that. yes. Um, these are out of order. Uh, sure. Um, to find a person, you're looking in the wrong places. Um, and this was referencing uh, being within your community and the people that you see active in your church and the people you see um, going on missions and the people that you see active in the community. Those are the type of people that you want to associate with because that's the type of person that you want to be. If, you know, being a Jesus loving, church going, good, whole, hearty Christian, you know, you're not going to meet the one and only at a bar or at a club or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he actually, he had made a really funny joke because he was like, um, and I'm totally going to butcher it, but he's like, you know, the really good Christians that think that they're going to meet the one at a bar. I mean, y- here, look. You meet a person, and she she's uh, she's a good Christian person, and she's handing you a Bible. You know, I'd like a Virgin Mary, please. Oh, by the way, uh, the the Jesus was the son of a virgin. But I don't know. I totally butchered it. But <laughs> yes. sorry. But like you know, just the, that concept of like so, a really holy okay. woman. Okay. Out of, but yeah, so sure. so he said, uh, meet people um, within your community, and. I can kind of relate specifically to that. the church and specifically the, yeah okay. go to go to the events and meet the people and do the stuff and blah blah and blah and find the, the girl church. you're going to have sex with for the rest of your life at right. church at church right and, and at church. separate it got it separate it we can talk about meeting people at the bars and stuff versus meeting people within your own social group you can you can just okay. replace community with your social group so yes do you have any problems meeting people at bars and because like i think i he wasn't trying to give like a negative connotation to it but he was just like you don't really want to associate yourself with the people that you meet downtown like i think in it's judgmental yeah he didn't he didn't it didn't seem it judgmental it when didn't. he it didn't he didn't give off that presence but you're like okay let's just boilerplate plate what did you just say blah 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 blah, blah. yeah that sounds like you don't want to meet people at the bar and stuff like that so um yeah i i guess like well, i've been I've been out of the dating game for a while, but um, when Except I was... Except for that one time when you went to Hawaii and you went on that bender. Oh, yeah. You know me. <laughs> you know me, man. Because I, I would Hulu. love to go to Hawaii. Hitting up the um, Hawaii bars. I know. Just all the natives. I can't can't get enough. Freaking pineapples. Of the bare floors. Shit. Yep. Uh-huh. That would be good. <laughs> That I actually does sound Let's really go to good. Hawaii. I'm, Fuck I mean, it, let's I'm go. I'm yeah. Right now, just <laughs> buy a ticket. The bonus content just runs for days. <laughs> it's like, where the fuck yeah, did we go? Hey, we're back from Hawaii, <laughs> guys. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I guess when I was a freshman in my first semester as a freshman in college and then in high school, mm-hmm. uh, it was easy because every girl was around you in class. And, That's true. You know, and you knew people from high school and you had friends in that group. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess... Yeah, if you want to find that one goody goody Christian girl, you want to stay within your church. Um, but separating it even more from finding a girl at a bar to, you know, in your friend group, I, I don't see a problem. What if you do find that one girl that has has the same kind of likes and dislikes as you, and she's just mm-hmm. having a having a glass of whiskey or having a beer at a bar, and you get the balls enough to walk up and. Say hey, my name is Yuval. What's See, good? See, you can't do that though, because because well, you're at a bar and that's yeah, sinful. That's well, I I don't think he was saying it. He was very he was very the nuance he gave off was very 
non-judgmental. Like he understood that we were all sinning in some sort of way, you know, whether it's the, again, the porn addiction or the doing drugs or the stealing or the whatever, or the sure. bad personality. He all, he all, uh, but he didn't. He was never like, "Oh, you shouldn't do this." He's just saying, "Okay, well, what can you do?" But yeah. Alex, being a single man, have you ever been to a bar and met a lady and uh, anything like that? Uh, or any of not necessarily has to be a bar, but have you ever just gone out and just was like, "Hey, you a lady? I got a peener. Let's do the big doo doo." Not like that. Uh, let's I'd... do a social experiment where you say that exact same line <laughs> hey, to a hundred girls. <laughs> I got the peener. See how fast you get shot. If you get laid once, I will pay for your hospital bill to cover the chlamydia that you get. Because only a girl <laughs> that a, only a girl that has chlamydia would fall for that line. Yo, you've heard. I mean, you heard of the hundred slaps, or the, I'm sorry, ninety nine slaps theory, right? No, Alex, Where have you heard you of the ninety nine slaps? Shit. Like first the Kevin the, Bacon, the Kevin Bacon then thing, the... and now this. You never heard of the ninety? Okay, the ninety nine slaps theory is pretty simple. You ask a hundred girls out, you're gonna get ninety nine slaps, but you're gonna get one, oh. at least one yes. I don't know. You don't, know have, if that to do, you don't accurate. have to do about the the peener vagina thing, but just like random random girls, you go to a mall, literally go to a mall, you see girls, you're gonna ask a hundred of these girls, ninety nine are gonna say no or slap you, and then at least one's gonna say yes. It's all about a number. It's the numbers game. If you ask them like specifically for sex, they will most likely say no. Okay, yeah, but, but this like, is just asking out. Like, See, like what, do you want to go on a that. date with me? I disagree with that. I think it's a fifty percent chance because really, only yes yeah, or I... no. Well, but I mean, out of out of out of the hundred girls that you ask, you think fifty of them are going to say yes? Yes. Really? Yes. Because let's go. At, at that point, <laughs> it's about confidence. It's about True. how yes. you portray yourself. Yes. True. And after the first twenty that say no, you're going to start to figure out okay, what's working, what's not working. Yeah, and that's true. And by... You're going to get good at it eventually. Yes, and true. that would actually improve your chances. Indeed. Interesting. And it also depends on what type of girl you go after. That yes. is a big, that is a, that's, that's something oh, just that. Just any girl, just like, you, you literally girl. from, from walking into. Cause the... I can almost guarantee I can walk up to a girl and. Careful, Blake. I'm not, I'm not gonna, but okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. This I can is... almost no, guarantee. with your wording, careful. In theory. What? Just, I just. Walk it's, up to a fat bitch. The, 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 pretty much. The, what, pretty just, much. Careful, don't say that. Okay. <laughs> My point is, uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound like a dick, but all right, fine. <laughs> sure. A, a lower confidence holding woman. Yes. I mean, yes. I guess. Sure. All right. Well, then, ladies on your playing field or higher. Well, no, that's not true because those are the lower confidence. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. But I hope his girlfriend doesn't listen to this podcast. I, I mean, she'd have to pay to 10 bucks you. a month to hear this she bonus needs, content. She'd be pissed at you, boy. Oh, really? Um, yeah, you'll see her soon. I'm sure she'll <laughs> love that. <brain. laughs> I, she's not going to hear this, though. This is all bonus content. God, Lee. Assuming that Blake doesn't tell I her. I will know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what happens <laughs> in the bonus content stays, stays in, in the, the bonus, bonus content. content. <laughs> Unless Brittany pays $10 a month to hear the bonus content. <laughs> I can almost guarantee she doesn't. <laughs> But um yeah no I don't but, have any Patreon but, patrons so but yeah you can yeah you but know? what about like you go around for like seven eight nine tens and do the hundred questions do you think you're gonna get ninety nine nine nos or more nos less nos it would take me a few tries because well, I'd have to I'd have really? to get back I'd do you have think get, you're that charming no I'd have to get back into the swing of things you you have to be clever yeah yeah yeah, yeah whatever whatever yeah, ignoring the fact that you uh, are dating Brittany whatever you get into the swing of things like yeah I'm not saying you're, like you're, I'm you're, Mr. you're Studley. primed and ready to go I'm not saying I'm Mr. Studley I can go out and pick any girl I want but at mm-hmm. the same time if you approach it the right way any guy can yeah I don't know about that I I still I think the 99 we have to do a experiment a social experiment. what do you mean why not any guy. I, well, it just, I, I just, I don't know. There, it depends. It also does depend on the guy. Like, is the guy, because, like, a homeless looking guy? Is he well, super permanent proper looking? Well, even, even then, I mean, it's like, take all three of us. All three of us, if we just go separate directions in a mall, we're just going to ask. Obviously, I'd have to, like, shave my head more so you don't have this weird, like, hair here sure. thing. It's all about first impressions. And so I think immediately, you know, Alex and I, we're going to be at a disadvantage because girls don't like glasses. Some girls just don't <laughs> like glasses, and we're going to run into that. I'm just saying, it's what, a thing. What women are you talking to? I don't, I don't like know. Some women don't women like some I... women don't like beards. Some women don't like beardless people. So it's like there's there's different first contact distinctions that I don't think you're taking into consideration. Where you know, fair. Blake, you walk up to me and you got a big old fat dick and just, hey baby, wanna go out and I would never walk up to a girl <laughs> that I'm trying to pick up 
with a dip. That is at least a two week. You got to ease them into the fact that <laughs> like you're at a party and with her like on around the third or th- second or third week. And that's mm-hmm. when you like, hey, I'm gonna put a dip in real quick. What? Blake, you dip. This is over. What? Ah! <laughs> All right, leave. <laughs> Damn. Wow, what a bitch. Find a ride home. Wow, what a bitch. Me? Yeah. Why? You just dipped in front of me. Uh huh. Yeah. Alex, is he not a bitch? No. Uh, Thank you. I mean, like, that's Uh, not a huge thing. uh, You can work that out. uh, I'm not kissing you if you got dip in your lip. I I mean, you don't have to. Because most people are going to be, like, considerate enough to either remove the dip before. I don't want tobacco. If a girl's, like, dipping, it's got a, like, what Blake does and just. Hey, how you doing? Do I ever? Yes, literally all of the time. He does not sound like he has a dick in his mouth. Hey, I do a horseshoe. Look at me. I have not put a horseshoe in <laughs> since we did the COVID. <laughs> I did a horseshoe because I did this. Is that if entirely a, necessary? If, but <laughs> if a girl walked up to me and was like, hey, what's up? But like, with. <laughs> With the horseshoe in, I would say no. I don't think it really I have not put a me, horseshoe but... in since we did the Copenhagen challenge that a night I was house sitting. Oh, okay. Where well, you then. flipped out. That was really gross. It was really you gross. lost your mind. Anyways, moving forward. Uh, anyway, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. Um, third one was uh, sticking to convictions and don't keep things shallow. Um, like. They're, they like hate. hating somebody that puts dip in their mouth. Exactly. Yeah. Or finding uh, fat chicks at the mall. No, not that. It's like <laughs> tattoos. Uh, the like you know smoking or dip or whatever. Blah blah blah. It only matters if you stick to the convictions of the Bible. Um, I forget what they were, but essentially find someone who is godly or whatever. Find someone who is close to Jesus, close to God. Uh, does does good in the community. Blah blah blah. Very religious convictions, and so. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I agree with that kind of to an extent. I think it's okay to be shallow a little bit, um, because this is someone you're going to have to like be with and see and talk to and communicate for your whole life. So mm-hmm. if they do this, I mean, you just really long thing for the entire whole life, then like, you know, I'm not going to want to be around that. So is that entirely necessary? <laughs> <laughs> Blink, are you okay? I'm sorry, Blake. You know, I'm just kidding. You know, I'm just playing with mm-hmm. you. Yeah, um, you're real funny. I am hilarious. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so so are you guys the same thing? Like, could, do you think you can look past the 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 quote unquote petty stuff? I mean, I think tattoos are sexy. So, what if what if she had like a unibrow? That's not a tattoo, now, is it? Well, that's something. Okay, you can I'm sorry, ch- that's but, something you can change, <laughs> right? But she doesn't want to. She's proud of her unibrow and she wants to keep it. I'm moving on. Really? Yeah. You can't look past. How that? big is the unibrow? It's just like imagine Blake. Well. Yeah. Blake doesn't really have bushy eyebrows. No, do I have bushy eyebrows? I don't know. I think I do. No, not really. It's just like I let's just assume like that's the unibrow. Oof. Hey, that's uh. Hey, for those of you who are just listening to the podcast, <laughs> Yuval has put not... his fingers on his eyebrows <laughs> to connect them. <laughs> hey. And, uh... Yeah. Could you look past that, Alex? If she were like the perfect woman, otherwise, yeah. I mean. That's well, not that so, but even because even then, um, I don't, I don't find that attractive, though. I, yeah, it's so not attractive, that, but I mean, sure. But like, if and 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 the, and this is branching off because he he was more he was saying, you know, uh, the personality and everything. Sure, you could have someone who you ha- like the same shows and you like the same book and you have the same convictions and you have the same whatever and blah blah blah. But if you guys aren't actively pursuing uh, a church life and actively blah blah blah, that's not going to matter. So how much of an extent it, so realistically how on the scale what is it worth so sure let's replace church life with just being a good person so let's just yeah. let's replace it say okay she's a good person she volunteers um you know she does community service you know she's she's active um she's a, a activist not an extreme activist but she's very vocal about her opinion just overall good person so you have that on that scale she's good and then you have some similarities and personality traits and blah, blah, blah. But then, like, you get down to the petty where, you know, I don't know, she farts a lot or something. Or she, like, has uh, some really, really offensive thing that she thinks or believes in or whatever. Or, like, to what extent is that okay or when you're moving on? 
what do you, how much are you willing to put up, put up with realistically? I think is yeah, the question. it's like a graph, you know, like what Dimitri Martin, do you know who that comedian yes, is? The, yeah. the crazy, where he has the crazy, crazy the hot crazy, scale, crazy hot scale or in the cat. And it's like yeah. how hot she is going on the Y axis. And then how much he cares about her cat on the X axis. <laughs> and it goes up and up and up. And at some point, I don't care how hot you are. I don't want to hear about your cat. And it just starts going down. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I get, it depends on your taste. Um, for, for me, uh, a unibrow kind of does it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't find those attractive. And so like, what if Brittany just grew unibrow all of a sudden? All of a sudden, if Brittany grew a unibrow and was like, Blake, I don't know what happened to me, but I'm keeping it. It must be a reason. There must be a reason. She's keeping it. Uh, She's keeping the unibrow, Blake. You can't abort it. Uh, <laughs> um, man, fuck you. Um, that is a dick question. No, I'm it's just, not. It's a legit. I, Blake I was like, I'm moving on if a girl has a unibrow. I so like, I understand the legitimacy of the question. I would stay with her. Blake. Having said that, <laughs> you've been with her for so long. I have, and yeah, I would. I. I That's another. It question. would be hard. I would have to get through it. But you'd stay with her. Yes, Good I would job. stay with Brittany. If what she about you, Alex? Bro. Would you stay with her? If I had been with her for how long have you guys been? Two days. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Two plus well, one we've, year. We've known each other since we were in kindergarten, but we started dating January tenth of twenty fifteen. So it's been two years and about ten months. I mean, at that point, like that's a commitment, so you can't really back out for something. I, okay, I agree. That's small. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for bringing up the word commitment. How long of a commitment do you have to have? until you have to have a legitimate reason for backing out like how long into the relationship can you still back out for like uh she does this thing that's really annoying it's kind of weird and then you back out well so you can leave a a relationship at any time really but the thing is like if you're leaving at say like three or four years into the the dating Uh um then at that point you would need a legitimate reason it's just you can leave at any time you just like your you reason has to, your so, reason has to get bigger and bigger and bigger and more. Yeah, you can't just important. be like, oh, hey, I'm just kind of done after four like the, fucking years. Well, what if the love flake flickers out and you're just like, I'm not attracted to you anymore. I don't, I don't, I care about you, but I don't love you. You, you spent like if you spent four years with the person, it's called then marriage. You, you need to fucking try to make that shit work because otherwise, that's a waste of fucking time for you and the person that you were with. I completely disagree. I think at any point in the relationship. Yes, it would be super, super shitty if, like, four years into the relationship, you're like, man, you have really smelly farts. I'm out of here. Like, obviously, that would be... Blake, don't you... God damn it, Blake. <laughs> Blake farted. I hate Blake. But, yes, that would be a really, really crap reason to leave. But if you're not happy in a relationship, and if, for whatever reason, this one singular thing is biting and eating at you and you can't be happy with this person... Is that the only thing that's keeping you from being happy? I don't know. But I, I don't. Is know. that the only reason? I uh, in this situation, if she's farting and stuff, maybe I'm unhappy with my work, and I'm using uh her farting as an excuse to like not think about the work. Okay, this maybe. is where I was talking about how any relationship is work. You have to work at it. So that so would you're take saying, you so to the talk point? to that person and work at it. And okay, work so at when's it. the point of no return then? Uh, cheating for me. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Let me rephrase that. So when when is the point? When when can you not back out? Like how long into the relationship can you not back out? Well, again, like we were saying, it, you can that, leave at any time, but you have to have right the a reason, legitimate fucking reason. Right, okay, but like if you're dating someone and it's only been like a couple weeks, and then uh, the person's like is it talks like a Cali girl and you just find oh. that really just drives you crazy. <laughs> and at first you thought it was kind of attractive and you're like, Ooh, this is fun. Blah, blah, blah. Two, three weeks later, you're just like, Oh God, I just, after shoot two myself. or three weeks you can, yeah. Right. So I'm when's that here. point that like the, the, the petty stuff you can leave because the petty stuff, just no problem, whatever. Is I it, think it takes around six months. So six months is the kind of like, I think that's a cut off. Like, Give it a try. If you're really looking for a relationship, give right. it a try. But if it gets to the point where you're like, Man, I cannot stand what yeah. this, 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 and this. Then after six, six months, months um, I, I, we can't do this. Okay. Yeah. That I mean, seems fair. At that point, it's not even a full year. Uh huh. So you're not necessarily wasting either of your time. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, in theory, you wouldn't develop like a super attachment to that person. Mm hmm. So I think that that's pretty agreeable. So then you, so both of you guys think that after six months, Act after six months, that should give you enough time to figure out. Okay, if you want to, like, I, yeah, I if you want six months of, you know, trying it, working at it, and if the petty stuff isn't that big of a deal after six months, mm-hmm. keep going, keep going. And so, but then it becomes you have to work at it, and right. then becomes that's when the hard work comes in. 
Uh-huh. What if at like a year and a half, she go. finally introduces you to her Ku Klux Klan Nazi family? Yeah, that's a red flag. Yeah, uh, that's and a... I think you would have noticed that earlier. No, she completely hid. It's only her family. She's completely normal, very progressive, very like smart and blah blah blah. But like she's hid her, hid her family. You know, she's never talked about them. Whatever, whatever. You've asked about them, and she's like, "Oh, they're just they're they're people," or because she didn't say people, but you know, I I love them. They're my family. Um, you're like, "Oh, well, when can I meet them?" They're really busy. You know, my my dad. She's does... trying to push it off, push it off, push right, it off. Right, right. She puts it off, push and it off. And then you meet her brother, and her brother starts saying anti-Semitic stuff, and you're like, right. "Wow, that was weird." And maybe then you just a weird brother. Meet the dad. At like a year and a half, you meet the dad, meet the mom, he's got and the he Nazi comes in, sleeve, and he's you're like, b- more blown out than that. He's got a Ku Klux Klan outfit decked out in Nazi shit. And he's like, I hope you're not an N-word. And then you're obviously white, but he says that actively as, of, as the first thing he says to you. And it's um, a year and a half. I'd be like, Hello, baby, sir, we're, do you know we're where the bath? Do you know where the bathroom is? <laughs> and then leave. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I'm, that was a joke. No, I know, I know. But like, um, would you stick with her, or would you just try and get past her family? Or because that's a huge fucking thing. Because I'd have to be like, thing. Shalom, Mazel Tov, my name is Imbasado. <laughs> Like, and see what the fuck they do. You'd have to change your name to <laughs> something like Brad or something. My name is Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Dad, I want you to meet. My name's you fall. Simon. <laughs> <laughs> no, so like, so, so then family and stuff like that. If it's just they have a shit family, is that worth? Staying? Everyone thinks that their spouse has a shit family, though. That yeah, I that, mean, you can just be like, hey, babe, we're moving out of state. What if she wants to stay, to stay near? Hey, family? babe, I love you, but I'm not messing around with your family. Yeah, and if and that's if, too much, if, for the, her, if you can't handle that, then I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. So, so then really big reasons are okay after however long. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Um, moving on to point four, and we're going to finish this up hopefully real quick, and then we can go into the actual, not just the bonus content. So um, talking about Klansmen. And- <laughs> uh, point four was, um, come on, you all think, what's point four? Point four was, fuck, I forget what point four was. Point oh, five, point five, <laughs> I, f- I, f- honestly, I forget. I feel like a piece of shit. I'm just going to call it, but, but th- they had those kind of centric things. So, I don't know. I, I thought it was really interesting. I thought they were kind of covering over topics, and the guy was seemed pretty chill and, like I said, passionate and stuff. So I don't know. All of that stems from the belief in the authority of what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. And if you take that seriously, and mm-hmm. if you are straight up down for Jesus, that's your, your that that's your DTJ? guy. DTJ. Yeah. DTJ. Down. Wait, DFJ, down to Jesus. DFJ. Oh, DFJ. Down for Jesus. Down for Jesus. Then follow those tips and whatnot and find a good, wholesome Christian woman or man and DFJ down for just sex (laughs) duffs. (laughs) (laughs) No, I agree. Should make t-shirts. Um, Alex, got anything closing remarks on that? Would you go to that? Would you guys knowing, knowing the experience I had, I think they've closed the relationship part and they're actually the next week. Uh, she said that they're going to go over like, uh, careers and jobs and stuff like that and how you can, you know, living in the 21st century, um, how that impact. Would you guys go? No. Why? Just purely just because it's a church? Because I know. What if I said like... it was a business meeting and there was a guest speaker, but they have a job. <laughs> it's being held in, it's being held in an office. The office is a church. Well, that would be different if it was like an actual legitimate business person mm-hmm. rather than a church speaker. Mm-hmm. Because if you go to that for the church speaker, mm-hmm. he's just going to constantly incorporate Jesus will help you well, through it. But no, but and not even that. Like, That's not what I'm but fucking here hold for. On, but hold on. Probably it wasn't until probably halfway through that he even mentioned Jesus at all. Like the first parts were all. But that's the thing. He still did. Sure. And I expect that. And but that's if, not but what go, I'm going, but going for. But going in, if you expect that, and you can fine tune that out, and you can just filter what he, filter the Jesus stuff, and and actually and the information, look, in, look look past the. Look, I, I told I told my friends replace. I, I'm in a group chat, and I was just like, "Hey, guess where I'm at? I'm at a church." And they're like, "Why?" And I was like, "Well, blah blah blah, whatever. Just replace the word Jesus with tacos, and you, you have that filter in mind. Like, would you still go if he was like absolutely amazing? Otherwise, I would just go find another speaker. I thought he was re- he was a really passionate speaker, and I was like, I can vibe with some of the stuff that you're saying. Plus, real quick, plus, plus, their opening and closing band, sure, it was a super, like, he loves me, oh, fuck. he loves me, but, like, seriously, dude? They were good. Seriously? No, no, no. Well, okay. Oh. The, yeah, the music was good, and the singing was good. Lyrical content, aside from the point, like, 
the the music setup that they have, the pretty sound kick-ass, system, pretty literally, like that's like the shit that ACDC and stuff would play. Just a fucking <laughs> just giant ass stage, blasting <laughs> fire. Sound. Like lit- no, lit- they had lights and they had just like all the right. shit, the smoke and shit. Like like it was decked the mm-hmm. fuck out. Like it, you could a legitimately medium to maybe large size band could go play there and it could fit like you know hundreds of people for like a super cool event. Okay. The sound system was it. totally dope. Honestly, next week we should just go just for the intro, just so you can feel the the the. Because like literally, I felt it. I was just like, "Whoa, this is really loud!" Like I like I, my arms are like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and I was just like, "Wow." You need to really talk loud. to their sound producer. Then, yeah, right? I was gonna say that's You don't called... want an overdubbing bass. You want to hear the. Oh well, that's I mean, bad leveling. You can no, I mean you can. Yeah, okay, you can hear it, but it was still really loud. Yes, to the I point. was just yeah. messing with. Ha ha ha! You're funny. Mess with me, whatever. But anyways. Yeah, you guys um, should go. I mean, like, I really, really fucking hate myself for saying you should go to church. Well, but, like, no, but I I went to, to church, church since I was four years old, uh-huh. and I stopped Did you ever going do when mega I was churches? seven. No, I okay. hate mega churches. But um, have mega you been though? Yes, are the worst. The, the reason I went to a mega church was because one of my friends in high school asked me to go, mm-hmm. and I went and to like this Wednesday night. I think it was called like Crash or something. Crash. Um, yeah. <sighs> um, and. Um, and it was Saber written. It for me at that time, it got away from the message. Like yeah. you're, they, they have all of these things that are that are supposed to be flashy, and mm-hmm. yeah, this is big church, but that's not what. If you read, you know, the text, it's not what you're going for. You're going mm-hmm. for l- reading the text, and you don't need a lot. And so that's why all through high school, I went to this really small church that's a mi- that's less totally, than a mile from my house. Total opposite experience. I he they didn't focus anything on the wow. We have a lot of people. No, blah, of course blah, 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 not. Blah. Of course not. I'm saying, but there is a general attitude oh. that revolves around yeah. these big mega churches that I don't I don't care for. I much more like the small church where it's much more personal, right? And you don't have. These That's distractions. True. You don't have the giant auditorium with mil- with thousands of people. You don't have the the li- you don't need the light show to understand what the word is saying. Well, that was specifically for the concert. Literally after the concert, and the guy was there. It was just the lights were on. He was talking. Right. Granted, they did have a live stream. It was live fed, like the mm-hmm. the church in Houston or whatever. Like they had giant TVs. So if you're sitting in the back, you can mm-hmm. just watch the TV, and not him specifically. But it was live streamed for like audio listeners and as well visual listeners. So. But I still thought it was like a pretty solid. Like he got to the point of what he had to say. He was very articulate, and he was just like, boom, "Yeah, I'm sure boom, he was a great speaker. Bottom. I'm sure he had great points." Um, so yeah, but I don't know. I just I'm I'm kind of out of that, and so all right, then let's go to synagogue then. Okay, all right, Alex, you can go to synagogue. Maybe. Really? That's the fucking difference. Religion is fine, just as long as it's not Jesus. I'm not mad. I'm no, just like, it's I'm I have an issue with mega churches because. They, what if it was a mega they synagogue? They don't have to pay. Okay. I'm so they're tax still, exempt. Yeah. So they buy synagogues all that are too. unnecessary shit. Yeah, but it's for the enjoyment of everyone. It's, it's, it's unnecessary. It's to, it's to facilitate a larger crowd. It's, it's unnecessary. The, the people who are really busy with their day to day lives and they can only tune into this because they still want to be a Christian and they still want to do live streaming is not hard to set up. You can set uh, it up to with be, about have good quality thirty dollars worth of equipment to have a good quality, a good sound system, a good video recorder. Like these are high tech cameras. So yeah, I, but a lot of also that, the money. We're kind of getting away from the point. I, so, whatever, right. whatever, that's fine. All right, what, we're gonna go. I'll take you guys to synagogue. Yes, I'll. I'll I would go to that God, to that church know. just to just. Oh, okay, to, cool. Yeah, I would just go. check it out. Yeah, see, I would Blake's got a, an open mind. Do it once. I would go to a synagogue just because I've never been to one. It's like Louis C.K.'s thing about being gay. He'll try a dick. I'll try anything once. Like, you know, <laughs> it, it, it could be the most beautiful dick in the whole world. Just like, just, I, mm, give, mm. It a little, give it a little kiss. <laughs> but, but yeah. you know, I, I, having been through all that and having been raised by mm-hmm. a Protestant dad and a right. hardcore Baptist mom, I, I've, I've seen everything that, you know, churches in Texas can throw at me. And so this would be nothing new. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just think it was an. I never at once said, "Man, I want to go home." While he was talking, I was sure. just like, "It was an enjoyable experience." I was just like, "Oh, hey, cool!" And then, bada boom, bada bing, it was over. And then they played a thing at the end, and then I left. Sure, I'd be. All right, to then go. we're gonna go to synagogue instead. No, we're not gonna go to church. We're gonna go to synagogue just because okay. Alex is being a pee pee head. I mean, I've never been to a synagogue, so that that would be an enjoyable. Honestly, experience. I haven't been to synagogue. I've within pro- and it's so horrible to say. Man, you're such a Jew. I am. No, no, no. <laughs> like within the past, probably like. Four, five, six. <laughs> ever since I've had my bar mitzvah, pretty much. Ever since I've had my bar mitzvah, I've gone to more churches than I have in synagogues. 
It's really horrible. Somebody I, converted you along the way. Yeah, <laughs> right? I'm just, oh, apparently I'm Christian. Like, back in, like, 2000, 2015, someone converted me. Uh, Your no. name is now Simon? Uh, <laughs> Simon Parker is my uh, Christian Simon name. Peter Parker. Simon Peter Parker. Oh, there you go. Um, but, yeah, so, all right. Moral of the story, you guys will come to Synagogue. I'll figure out. It's it just... I think I think they might have a Tuesday thing because I, I don't know if synagogues do the whole youth thing and getting. I am not in touch with Jewish. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't religion. Know. So if I did, just like I was, it was a whole new experience when I went to your Passover seder. Yeah, it would be like that. When did you go me. to my Passover seder? Uh, do you not remember? I got fucked up on that Jewish wine you had, Manischewitz, dude. <laughs> yeah, and I woke up. I, I, I went to sleep on the couch. Oh yeah, I remember. And then and you, you were just like in the, the middle of the floor or something like that. I think yeah. my pants are off. Yeah, your pants. You're just in your boxers. I, when I woke up in the morning, um, Blake was like in his boxers, like laying on the floor. Okay, so, um, dude. He's out in the open, just not in a room. Like we, uh, when you walk upstairs into my dad's house, uh, you have just kind of this uh, long, kind of hallway esque area, but it's like a room where you can play games and put tables and stuff like that. So it's like a game room sort of deal. Okay. And then um, you take a right into the media yeah, room where I right fell asleep on that couch. Media room is right here, and then I fell asleep like over here in a separate room. So in the morning, I woke up and then I walked out into that game area, and I just see Blake on the floor in his boxers. <laughs> I forget what I did. Did I wake you up or what? No. Oh, okay. I woke I up like. Yeah. The hell? Yeah, and then and I just, went straight mm-hmm. back to the couch. Yep, yep. You did. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't even question where your pants went. Just went back to the couch. Nope. Just hey, Passover. Yo, man, <laughs> is really. I mean, it's like really sweet and stuff. It's not like traditional. That's wine, why. That's why so. I got so messed up it's because I was like, oh, this is nothing. Yeah, it's I had like twelve glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really fun. Anyways, yeah, uh, we'll we'll all go to synagogue. Moral of the story. All right, everyone. This was the end of the bonus content. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. It was actually been an hour, so I'm really surprised that nice. we made it to an hour. Yeah, like almost pushing an hour. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this horrible, shitty rendition of bonus content. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, uh, peace out, and hope you guys listen to the advice podcast. All yes. Right. And Brittany, if you're listening, I'm not going to malls to pick up fat chicks. <laughs> Brittany, if you're listening, thank you so much for paying ten dollars to be a patron. I really appreciate it. Glad that we're LinkedIn on uh, LinkedIn. Glad that you're paying oh, me money. Uh, Blake, does she pay you money? No, she pays me money. <laughs> no, she. <laughs> You just turned my girlfriend into a whore. <laughs> Not my intention. But which one is she actually dating? Because I mean, I, apparently she's paying me money and we're linked in on LinkedIn. So like, but he's the one that gets to make out with her. So who's the real true. winner here? I mean, Blake is obviously the real. Blake has always been the winner. I've always lost. Blake hates me. He's beaten me up. I've been abused my entire I life. Have when I've never Blake. beaten you up. Blake has fought me and put cigarettes out on me. And God, <laughs> please send help. SOS. Who burned you as a child? It's all Blake. Where else do you put cigarettes out? <laughs> your your, your father your father comes out and puts in a uh, puts what is it a hammer a belt and a and a crowbar. What do you what do you choose? The crowbar. Cause why? why? Cause fuck him. Cause fuck him. That's why. <laughs> All right, and that was the end of my horrible shitty reference. All right, everyone, Holy peace shit. out. <laughs> it's gonna-